This is video number four for Word Module 1 in the Shelley Cashman book on Office 365. We're on page 1-47, and this segment is about selecting non-adjacent text. So what we want to do here is we want to select the first word in each one of these five numbered paragraphs here underneath the word how. If you want to select a single word, you can just double click on the word. Uh, if you go to another word, though, and double click on it, then you lose the selection on the first one. And the way to get around that is hold the control key down while you make your selection. So I selected wet. Now I'm going to hold the control key down while I double click on lather, double click on scrub, double click on rinse, double click on dry. So now I've got a non-adjacent selection here. And I just missed my mini toolbar there. So I'm going to have to go up to my home tab and I want these to be bold so I can click on the B for bold. Note that the keyboard shortcut for bold is also control B. So you can just do it from the keyboard directly and it's a lot faster. So let's go ahead and make those words bold. There is a section on uh, shortcuts for selecting uh, different quantities of text on the top of page 1-49. We're not going to go through that, but I do have another video and I'll try to provide a link for that so that you can go check that one out as well. But we're going to move on to the bottom of page 1-49. We want to save an existing file with a different name. So we want to click on the File tab. And one of the options is Save a Copy. And they used to do this. They used to call this Save As. Now they have Save a Copy, which probably makes a little bit more sense. It's a little more descriptive, I think. So click on Save a Copy. And the name that we want for this is we're going to put it um, on my desktop along with the other one. But I'm going to change the name of this. Um, SCWD1 Wash Hands Flyer. But this one is formatted, so I don't need to retype the whole thing here. I can just change this. And then go ahead and click on the Save button. It will save the document on my hard drive and it is now saved. We're back in the document. Now we're at the middle of page 1-50. We're going to insert and format a picture in our Word document. And the place we want to insert that picture is down here on the blank line between the How section and the When section. So we left that blank line in there. If you didn't put the blank line in when you're creating the document in the first place, just go to the end of the word dryer here and hit enter and you'll get a blank line inserted. Okay, we want this to be centered. So we're going to go to our home tab, the paragraph group, and the center button right here. Now we want to insert a picture. That's going to be on the insert tab. And we've got a group here called Illustrations. We want pictures. We've got some choices under pictures. And we're going to do just plain old pictures. And if it doesn't automatically go to your folder, um, you can go here and you can, you know, go to the left side here and navigate until you find the folder that this picture is in. But you should have a copy of this picture along with the rest of the data. Go ahead and click on it and then click on Insert. And it puts our picture in. So now we are on the top of page 1-52, and we have just inserted that. Now we're going to move to the top of page 1-53. We're going to change the zoom to one page. Click View on the ribbon to display the View tab. So we're going to go up here and click on View. And what I want to see is I want to see the entire page. So we're going to click on the One Page button up here. And now we can see a complete page. Actually, we're not at the top of the page. so let's. Scroll up a little bit over here. Now we can see the entire first page. Now we're at the bottom of page 1-53. We want to resize an object proportionally. So we want to take the picture and we want to resize it. It's a little bit big for what we've got. So when you insert the picture, uh, these little symbols around these, the sides and the corners will appear. Those are called handles or sizing handles for resizing the picture. And this little arrow up here is for rotating the picture if you want to rotate the picture. The handles will appear whenever the picture is selected. The way you select the picture is just by clicking on it. When you do that, this picture format option appears up on the ribbon. It's not there when you don't have a picture selected. So I'm going to go off of the picture here and just click someplace, and you'll see it goes away. So if I want to get it back again, just go down here, click on the picture. 
and I get the picture format tab up here on the top. When I click on that, the entire picture formatting ribbon appears. Now let's go to the top of page 1-54, and they want us to resize it. Now you can resize it by grabbing any one of these eight corners or sides and getting your two-headed arrow key and just dragging it and resizing it. If you drag it from a corner, it will preserve the aspect ratio of the picture so it doesn't get distorted. But if you go to one of the sides and do it, you can get a distorted picture. I don't want a distorted picture, so I'm going to undo that. Now, it tells us to draw it so it's approximately like it is in the picture on page 1-54. But at the bottom, it says we should have a height of about 2 inches and a width of about 3 inches. And there's an easy way to do that. Once you've got the picture selected and you go to your picture format tools, you can make it exactly what you want over here. We need to use the arrow buttons to go up or down by a 10. I want this to be 2, and uh, I get exactly 3 on the width if I do that. So that's pretty much the size that we want to have. So you can get a very precise size by just going up there and typing in or using the buttons to select the size that you want. Now there are also some ways to style a picture. So you're not just inserting a plain picture here. You can do things like borders and shadows and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a style to this picture. And the picture styles are up here. They take up a pretty big chunk of the ribbon for your picture formatting. And if we click on the More button here, it will show us all of the options that we have for applying a style. And the nice thing about it is it does a live preview. So if you pause the mouse over these and give it a you know about a second, it will show you what it's going to look like if you apply that particular style. Now let's go to the top of page 1-56. And we want Snip Diagonal Corner white okay so i'm guessing that's this one right here we've got the corners snipped off here and let's go ahead and click on that and now if we click off of the picture that is what we get that should match the picture on the bottom of page 1-56 you can also do what are called effects for pictures i'm going to reselect the picture now to get the picture format ribbon to appear and picture effects are listed up here uh, right in the picture styles group which extends from this vertical line over to this vertical line here so let's click on picture effects and we've got some choices so we had a bunch of different choices here the one and if, the nice thing about this too is this also does a live preview if i pause the mouse over each one of these you'll see it'll add a different type of shadow We've also got reflections. If you pause the mouse, you'll see a little reflection below the picture. You can you know, pick different options here to change the size of the reflection and change the distance of the reflection from the actual picture. But uh, And you can just take a look at these and you know, pause your mouse over and see what they do so you get familiar with them. The one that we want to do in the textbook is we want to choose shadow. And the particular one we want is perspective upper left. And down in the perspective group down here, this one is labeled upper left. Let's go ahead and click on it. And you'll see it puts a little shadow down behind the picture on the left side. So now we're on the top of page 1-57. And the next section is on enhancing the page. We're going to flip over to page 1-58. And we're going to change the theme colors. Okay, the themes information is on the design tab up here we've got themes over here on the left and we've got theme colors over here and there's a whole bunch of document formatting options that we'll talk about some other time so let's click on the colors button we get a bunch of color palettes we've got eight different colors in each palette and each one of these colors controls a different aspect of your document so if we pick the first one here the blue right here must be for that apply to that text right there instead of so it was brown before but it's going to be blue if we go here uh same thing with the outline around wash your hands those were colors that we picked from let's go back here to the home tab and we went to our theme colors so if we change the theme to something else then these colors will all change the standard colors are always going to be there but the theme colors will change depending on what you do on the design tab here either picking a different theme let's just pause the mouse over some of these and you'll see um, picking a different theme can make a big difference in how your document looks but we're not going to change the theme we're only going to change the colors so let's go over here and click on the color button again 
and we get a bunch of options. The option that we want is blue two. So this is blue two. Go ahead and click on it. Now notice when I go back here, there'll be a little outline around blue two. Yeah, it's kind of subtle, but uh, you can see which one is currently selected by looking for that little outline. Okay, let's click off of colors, click back on our document. So your document should look something like this now instead of the brown um, highlighting and text at the top. Now we've got a shade of green. So let's move on to page 1-59. and We're going to add a page border. So we're still on the design tab and we've got some page borders over here on the right side. Let's click on that. So we've got a bunch of styles here. We want the third one from the bottom. So we're just going to quickly go all the way down to the bottom of the list here. And one, two, three. So it's kind of dark on the outside and it's got lighter shades of gray as you move towards the interior. We want a box. We've got some options over here, but box is the one that we want to select. Now we want to select the color for that. We're going to click on the down arrow button here for color. We want turquoise accent three darker 25 percent so we're going to go to the seventh color 10 9 8 7 and we want the fifth row two three four five click on ok and now your document should look like this if you look at the bottom of page 1-60 that is what your document should look like right now let's go on to the next section to change spacing before and after paragraphs if you want to change spacing between paragraphs, you don't have to hit the enter key and insert a blank line in between paragraphs. If you want to increase or decrease the space, the smart way to do it is by using the spacing before and after paragraphs option. What we want to do in this case, we want to click on the word how. Then we're going to go to the layout tab. And here we've got for paragraph, we can change the left or the right indent. And we can also change the spacing before and after. So there is zero points before but eight points after. And remember, a point is a 72nd of an inch. So if I drag the mouse over this, you'll see that's what zero above the H looks like. There's a little bit of gray space, but that's basically considered zero. You notice there's more space down below, though. So that's eight points, which would be about a ninth of an inch. And what we want to do is we want to change that to zero. So that's the spacing after. We're going to go down here, and this goes in increments of six. Since we were past six, it goes down to the six, and then it goes down to zero. So it makes this a little bit closer. We want to do the same thing with the word when down here. So let's go down and click on when. Let's go up here and change this to zero. Then we want to go down. We're on the top of page 161 now. And what we want to do is we want to go down to the bottom here. We want to put a little bit of space between this and the text above. There's two ways to do that. You know, you could hit the enter key, but we're not going to do that. We're going to tell it that we want some space before. We're going to change that to 12 by increasing it twice. And now if I drag the mouse over this, you can see that there is a little bit of extra space before. Let me undo that. So I drag the mouse over it now. You see there's very little space above it. It's practically right above the V. If I click on this and increase it to 12, that would be about a sixth of an inch. It doesn't look like very much here, but we are zoomed out quite a bit, so it is going to look rather small. But if we looked at this at 100%, that would be about a sixth of an inch. And we're getting close to 15 minutes, so this is probably a good place to stop.